right, here we are. Hello, it's Dr. Pat and Matt. That's funny. We rhyme today. Welcome to another episode of Matt Pat Live here. And I'm so excited to have my friend Dr. Pat with us today. Hello, before we jump in uh, and get started talking everything, why don't you just introduce yourself today to folks and tell them who you are, what you do, and why you're here? Well, it's a list. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, um, I have a, a big background in health care, and I've been a um, physician for over 38 years. And um, I've seen a lot, and I have some really good clinical skills. But what I do is um, I help people live longer, better, and healthier. You know, I have, especially I have a, a developing uh, arena with women, uh, entrepreneurs and executives um, have a happy, healthier life that's more prosperous. Uh, and that's kind of in a nutshell. I have a background as a chiropractor, it's a certified in functional medicine, uh, lifestyle medicine. I'm an acupuncture physician. I've done a lot of studying. My father always said I'd be a perpetual student, but I love to learn and I love to help people. That's amazing. And we've, uh, we've connected um, on LinkedIn, which we're uh, broadcasting to today, as well as on Facebook and YouTube. Hello, everybody there. And um, we have uh, had a great time. We, we actually really started talking during one of my series that I did on self-sabotaging thoughts mm -hmm. and your happiness, right? And, mm -hmm. and you're yep. like, oh, I can help you out there. I remember we, we started chatting back and forth and had some really good conversations. And, and we'll talk about, about that a little bit today as well. I think it's important to kind of look back to that thought process about how we self-sabotage our, ourselves and our, our own happiness moving forward, you know, but there's so many things that um, that you have uh, available to people, um, and I'm just looking at your uh, at your LinkedIn uh, profile today, there's something that's on there. It says you make sense of complex and challenging problem situations um, quickly, mind, body, and soul in a better way that is simpler, faster, achievable, with more measurable results. It's fast reading, obviously, and you help your clients who are sick, overweight, and tired. Uh, finally, re release lifelong weight problems. Then you have a book or something you wrote about, like. Some about you're tired of being fat and ugly or something like that. Yeah, sick, <laughs> <and> tired. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, no. ugly. <laughs> so, I'm sure if there's some of us that are watching today, um, we might either be sick, fat, or tired, or we might be sick, fat, and tired. I'm sure. So, you know, that being the case, you know, how can you um, how can you give somebody a few few nuggets here in a few minutes to say uh, that doesn't have to be the case. Well, you know, one of the most important things, there's there's a lot of people walking around that are sick and don't know it. And people know if they're tired, people know if they're fat, basically. Um, and But people don't know if they're sick because that takes years to develop. So the whole point of the, and what I love about this book is that it's a great tool for going into New Year's and actually knowing where to start your health journey and making those health resolutions that you actually can achieve as opposed to letting them go to the wayside in the middle of February. Um, so, the wayside, so, your waistline, one of the two, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, like also too, it, it focuses on where your weakest link is because we don't always know where our link, weakest link is. And, you know, it also tells you where what you got, got going for you on the good side too. So it shows you what your strongest link is. So it's a, it's a, it's a workbook, it's a guidebook, it's an advocating tool to um, get the most out of your life and, and start taking and reclaiming where you're at and taking more control of your health so that when you have a conversation with a healthcare professional, you're coming from a point of view of knowledge as opposed to saying, oh, okay, so you want to do that. And you can focus on the right area for in, you know, in using your time and your energy and your money in a very more wise way. So you just said a couple of things. So knowing the right area and then of course, um, you know, the new year, it's 2021 and mm -hmm. Now there's been all kinds of these rev resolutions that people make or or secret resolutions. They don't want to admit that they really are, but they kind of have them in the back of their minds and they're yes. they may be achievable, may not be achievable. So, you know, what are what are a few really good um, solid guidelines to be able to achieve some of those things? Let's say somebody does feel as if that 2020, the craziest year of all so far, um, that 2020 um took a toll on them and you know they're either they feel tired because they probably gained more weight than they should have or maybe their weight's okay and they are exercising but they still feel tired um 
you know, they're concerned about getting sick, obviously. Everything's worried about this COVID stuff and all that kind of mess that's out there. So what are some what are some quick action plans that could be put in place to help make a I hate to use even word use that word resolution, but to make a resolution successful in somebody's life in 2021. You have to know where to start. Mm. You know, and so if in your investigative work of where are you, you have to know where you are. You have to have your health snapshot now. That's what the book does. It gives you that health snapshot now. Like there's 11 organ systems that work very intricately together. And when one of them's out of balance, it's like a Swiss watch. It stops working, you know, ultimately down the line. So the biggest thing that I would say to people, you've got to know what your health snapshot is now. You've got to know where your strongest points are at and where the weakest points are at. And then you can make a plan of like, what's my next best step? How do I do that? You know, where can I find the help that I need? You know, and, you know, what are like, you know, like everyone's got, you know, you can take all the placebos that you want or, uh, and, or examples like drink more water. I mean, we all know that we don't necessarily always do it. You know, but you've got to know what you're, you have to know what you're hydrating. I mean, you don't go out to your garden every day and for eight hours you water your rose bush. You know, you, you've, got, you've got to go, you have to know where to put that water. So yes. you, and, you know, and have, and the, get the right nutrients. Lifestyle medicine even says that, you know, the first you take a look at diet, then you take exercise, then you do targeted supplementation before you consider doing a, you know, pharmaceutical type drug or a medication or a prescription of some sort. You know, so you've got to take a look at what's going on with your diet, how much do you move, you know, and it's, it's just like, and then doing targeted supplementation. And even then you've got to go like, where's the root of the problem? Because if you keep on watering that one rose, it's going to die. Yeah. You know, that rose. And so you, you have to like know where you're, where to put that, your time, your energy. And so you're not wasting your money. I mean, like pharmaceuticals and also, um, you know, nutraceutical type things supplements they're expensive you know so if you're going you know it's just like in with everything that's going on i would want to know like hey what's what's my weakest link i want to know how to get out of it that it's really good so all right so a guy like me who's been battling cancer for nine years i have a lot mm -hmm. of i have a lot of permanent damage done to my body stuff that's not going to be medically and or holistically fixed i've got damaged damage right and then there's some areas that are just um, weak points in my life that um, that require you know different type of attention. For example, mm -hmm. how long do you water that rose bush, and 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 with what do you put with that water? So for a guy like me who has chronic fatigue, chronic pain, mm -hmm. and um, you know I'm a runner and I've been running, and then of late I started running again, lost some weight in the past month or two, which has been fantastic. But then palliative care tells me I think you shouldn't run anymore because now you've got uh, damage to your knees because of your rheumatoid arthritis, this, that, and the other, right? So now I'm like, oh, great. Now what do I do, right? So there are some people that have some physical limitations, mm -hmm. right? And then there are some folks that have mental limitations. So for those that have some of those physical limitations, um, what do you suggest? Well, you first have to find out where the main problem is. All chronic illnesses and diseases have something in common. Do you know what that is? Well, I can assume it could be the, the individual person's perception of those problems, but what would that be? No, it's inflammation. Oh, there you and, go. And in yeah. 2004, Time Magazine had this big expose and it said, oh, the surprising link between heart disease and hypertension and blah, blah, blah is inflammation. So you have to understand the three reasons why people primarily get sick. And so they get sick from either trauma, from toxins, or their thoughts. So trauma is things like, it, most people don't know this, but nine out of 10 births, uh, that baby that's come out of the chute has some type of cervical damage in their neck. That's the first part of inflammation that sets itself up. And then you have other things, you have bumps, scrapes, you fall you know, out of a tree, you're on a swing, whatever it is that when you're growing up. But the idea is not to get that as a new normal, is to get that straightened out. That's why you go see a chiropractor. And they have that mechanical alignment, structures function. And then you have things that are toxic. So you have things in your environment from the air that you breathe, the water you drink, the food that you eat, and the chemicals that you use in your garden and also in your house. 
If you ever read the label and you read the side effects on a lot of those, you can see where those, you know, there's issues, especially with heavy metals in this country. Everyone has exposure to them. The question is, how do you get rid of them? You know, and, and also, and how do you change those things? Like, you know, you can make better choices for eating and, you know, and, and maybe how to um, put foods together. So you combine them together. So it decreases the inflammation in your body. You know, and then, you know, it's just like if you're looking at where to target that inflammation, you can look at a specific organ group, which in this book, particular book has 11 chapters that are designated as very intense questions, very simple, but like there's a lot of questions for each organ system so you can identify it. One of my friends and colleagues who I asked to look at this book to give me his opinion about it told me that, you know, he himself had cancer. And he said, you know, before I had it, I didn't have any of those symptoms, you know, but now I do. And so, you know, if you knew like how to ward those issues off, which I call Grim Reaper syndrome, because we have things like, you know, they say, oh, floating, the floaters in your eye, they're normal. But they weren't there when I was 20. <laughs> you know, so what why are they there now? And what's going on that's creating them? What's you know, like what can I do? So the question is not what the diagnosis is, the question is what's in your environment? You know, yeah, the typical response that I get from some doctors saying, Matt, you're not as young as you used to be and you're getting older. So those types of things just happen to old people. Um, so these floaters and things of that nature, right? Yeah. It's not necessarily something that you should buy into and just accept and say, okay, life goes on. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can buy into it. And a lot of people do buy into it because when some, when in Western medicine, for instance, if you equate your problem to a fire in your house, you're going to call the fire department and the fire department's going to come and they're going to hose your whole house down. They're going to break through the windows and the doors with an ax. And then they're going to rush in and they're going to put everything and say, hey, look what I did for you. You know, I stopped the fire, but they ruined everything inside, <laughs> you know, and then you have the carpenter who comes in and has to put all those pieces of the puzzle back together again and repair them sometimes with new things. So when you do, when you look at the analogy of the fire department being the medical doctor or the Western medicine and the, um, and the carpenter being alternative medicine, you know, you want to, call the right person because you would never call the dentist to come to your house to put the fire out. He has a hose and an ax too. So <laughs> you, 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 it's it's a smaller ax. You can imagine I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> you could be there a long time while that fire is burning, you know, but the whole point is, is that, you know, we have a tendency in Western medicine, you know, to like hose things down. They treat hypertension with the same drug with, for it doesn't matter who it's to. They look at it as one big problem as opposed to looking at it like, but Matt, why do you have that anyway? You know, like, what, is there an underlying cause that happened? Because, you know, what I know in some research that one of the reasons why people get hypertension is they had exposure to chemicals, you know? And so like, why, or, you know, like you know, other things. And you look around your house at the stuff that you use in your house. Nobody ever questions like what's in Windex, you know, or what's in Clorox bleach. I mean, we know that bleach, you can't inhale it. It's dangerous for you. So why is chlorine in water, you know? And why is another neurotoxin in water like fluorine? When, and just recently in the last couple of years, they decreased those levels so low because they realize that there is a health connection for long-term exposure. So if you had the exposure maybe one time, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if you had the exposure, you know, rep repetitiously over and over again, I can remember one time I went to New Jersey. This is like when I was in chiropractic school and I was at my girlfriend's parents' house. And I said to her, we have to go to the store. And she goes, why is that? And I said, I go, I got to go buy some water. She goes, but we got water here. And I said, I can't drink the water from the tap. It tastes metallic. You know, and this is like back in the set, like, like very beginning of the 80s. And it tasted horrible to me. It, you could taste the metal in the water, mm -hmm. you know, and those things like, you know, when you drink, you know, um, like the, in the plastics, plastics are, you know, when I, I saw a woman, she came up and gave me a big hug. I have no clue who she is. But I, when she was buying something at, a, at a, a gas station a couple of weeks ago and she picked up a container of water that was sitting in the sun, like little, little bottles. 
I said, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't buy that container of water. I would buy a container of water that's in the shade. <laughs> and she said, why is that? And I said, because the sun heats that water up. And when it gets to a certain temperature, it interacts with the plastic and the post plastic in the water and you're drinking plastic. She went, ooh, <laughs> and then put the water down and went, I go, go inside to buy it. And you, know, and you don't know when they're shipping food like that, like in Santa on the tarmac, you know, in Miami and 100 degree weather. I mean, you really don't know that. So it's, you know, you got to take a look at like, what is the quality and then the quantity of the, what you're intaking that you're putting in your mouth that's going through your body. And that's supposed to be nourishing you. So if your gut's damaged, what happens is some of those things go through your gut a lot sooner or they're not absorbed correctly or they punch, like punch through, so to speak. The lining of the stomach is only one layer. <laughs> and so if you're eating something that's bad and it keeps on irritating it, then it can go through and it has to go into the blood system to go to the liver. And then from the liver, it does the function of detox. You can't ever detox the liver. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, and then from that detoxification, that the liver's supposed to do is supposed to dump it either in your urine to be excreted or in your feces back into your intestinal tract to be limited that way. But if you have a problem in your intestinal tract, then that inflammation that's sitting in there can get, can keep on recycling. So when the liver gets overwhelmed and it doesn't know where to put something, you know, it will put it in blood, brain, bone, and fat. So, and that's why people, a lot of times people have problems with losing weight. That's why people have problems with like sleep and that's why people have problems exercising, you know, and like in your knees. So the question is like, okay, if structures function for me, I'd ask you, when's the last time you got adjusted? Because all those nerves from your back go into your legs. And if there's a muscular imbalance, you know, in your body, then what happens is, is that you're going to have a pattern. And you have a new normal. We heard a lot about new normals in 2020, um, but you don't want a new normal. That's where you see that person who's standing straight up like this start to go and bend forward. We all have our, you know, we've seen people walk down the street that they can't even pick their head up anymore. And it's because these muscles in the front are a lot stronger than the ones in the back. So I'm always telling people when you exercise and you get a trainer, go make sure you work on your extensors more than you work on your flexors because your flexors are naturally strong because of the way that we, we function, you know, especially if you, if you sit a lot. So it's, it's important to get that, that perspective, you know, and then the third reason that people get sick, I mean, you know, and we over toxins, we talked a little bit about everything. So if anybody wants to know more about that, they can reach out to me. But the third reason why people get sick is their head, it's their thoughts. We now know that anxiety, depression, and um, a lot of the emotional type of, you know, head things that people go through are from the gut. Mm. So if you can change the quality of something that makes you, you know, that of the foods that you're eating so that you can heal the gut, then you, and you're having an anti-inflammatory diet, then you have a better chance than somebody who's eating junk food or, you know, this is easy for me. So I'm going to have, um, Th this food that says it's uh, like um, meatballs. And when you look at it, there's meat in it. There's GMO products like breadcrumbs of some sort. There's carrageen. There's other uh, things that are fillers in there to put it together. You know, and like I remember my mother making meatballs from, you know, meat and eggs. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> Two elements. So, you know, but the, the problem with the thoughts is that people start to ruminate and you all know if you've been upset, if you got in an argument with your spouse or if you're just like had a crappy day and you go to have dinner and you're focusing not on your food, but on your situation, you're mindlessly eating and you're, that emotion is being transferred into your food. And so you won't digest it very well. Mm. And then you like, you know, then you feel bloated and then you can't sleep. And then that perpetuates that cycle. It's like being on a hamster wheel <laughs> with no exit. And so when it happens one day, then two days, and then, you know, somebody will say, hey, you know, uh, I've heard somebody's like, I asked my sister, um, you know, I'm going, I'm getting kind of bloated. And uh, this is like last week before I came in to see you, Dr. Pat. And I, he, and I said, and what did she tell you? Oh, I had that too. <laughs> I always use that as an example when I'm telling people because people will, they want to not really address their issues in their health. And so, they don't. 
and they're scared. In thoughts that make you sick, because you bring up a great point, you know, what are some, uh, some folks are, are, are not consciously doing things. Sometimes it's subconsciously from our hurts and our pains, we do things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one, I mean, obviously would be to identify that there's an issue. Um, but what if we don't know that there's an issue? What if there's uh, other things happening, right? But how can we, how can we adjust our thoughts that are making us sick? I will tell you, if you're a woman and you're on the planet Earth, you know, you have thoughts. And women have this, you know, this bonding hormone in us. So anybody who we love or anybody who's in our sphere, we always want to take care of everybody else except ourselves. So how do you know that? Is at the end of the day, when you're early in the day going, oh, tonight I just want to relax. I want to have a bubble bath. I want to have just like downtime for me tonight. And when you get home from work, you got kids, you got a husband, you got a mother, you got a father, you got a dog, you got a cat, you got to go to the store, you got to take your kids to the soccer games, you know, when you could do that. Um, and, you know, and all of a sudden at the end of the day, it's like now you're exhausted. You've tackled on the world and you've gone to work. And by the time you get home, you don't have anything left over for yourself. It affects the quality of your relationship with yourself first. And then it affects the quality of your relationship with people who you love and yeah. people who matter. So, you know, if there's women have a tendency to do that a lot more, you know, so like when people can't sleep, I tell people, OK, get up, forget about sleep, get up. And what to ask yourself is, is there anything I can do about this issue that's bothering me right now? you got to identify the issue and, you know, whatever it is like, oh, I should have said this at work or whatever. I should have like, you know, because um, I uh, my rule is like I when I go to sleep at night, I want to be at peace with everybody in my brain. You know, so if I've got if I left something unsaid, you know, I will text the person and say, are you up? You know, and, you know, and then like, they'll go, no, I was sleeping, but I'm up now. <laughs> you know, why can you get on the telephone with me for a couple of seconds? And I'll just tell them what I want to say to them, because I want them to go to sleep peaceful and have peace of mind. So when they wake up the next day, they can do, go into that day, carpe diem, 150%. But you can't do that if you keep on having thoughts that keep you up. So what I tell people to do is, well, if you have something that you can do about it, go do it. If there's you, if you can't do something about it, then write it down because eight hours later, the problem's still going to be there. <laughs> it's not going to go away, you know, and give your permission to go to sleep. If you still have problems going to sleep, listen to binaural beats. They're wonderful. Um, everyone I've ever re recommended them and they found their, their kind of music that they like to listen to or, you know, because they, they run them at certain, whatever certain frequencies are, and that help you heal from bodily injury in your brain, the whole thing, it should give you a lot of peace of mind. So the, you know, and, and thoughts can, you know, run rampant when people like, if and, you know, you wonder why, how did that accident happen? You know, like a car accident, you know, people sometimes are just not in their body. They're not in present moment. You know, so when you have a thought process in your head that you just can't get past, write it down, dictate it, call the person up and just get it resolved because nothing is worth your ill health when you look at that in that from that regard, you know. And so that's that's what my, um, you know, when, when I'm talking to my clients for coaching and they're telling me stuff, sometimes I like, you I seriously, you stayed up at four o'clock in the morning doing what? Um, and I go, why did you do that? And then when you ask the question, you can go back and you can piece it back. Like, oh, I remember one time when I was like seven years old, you know, uh, at, you know, I was I had to do blah, blah, blah. And, and when I didn't, I was in so much trouble the next day. You know, it's sometimes that's amazing what people like find this light bulb, the, the, the dimmer switch going up. Because in, in reality, I posted this today on, on LinkedIn. Is that it's only an illusion. The light's been there all the time. You just yeah. have to run to it. That's so true. So let's let's look at two things here then. This has been great stuff. So one, your book. How can folks find you and how can they find the book? This book is available on Amazon.com and also Barnes and Noble and other media type that sells this type of book. Um, I recommend the book over the um, the digital version, and the reason for it is in making 
it's it's in your face. If you have it in hand, then it's it's there. So like you can follow up, you can leave it on your bookshelf, you can go to it like once every three months and do run through the questionnaires. It's not a long book to do. It's more, it's incredible information compacted. Um, and in, in the language that you can understand, I had an 11 year old editor <laughs> who made sure I didn't use any big words. <laughs> um, you know, so that was that was very, very helpful. Um, but that's the best. That's a really good way to get uh, to get a hold of that book so that you can and and digest it. So it's, it's written for, you know, um, a, like at least a kid who's 11 years old can understand it. Yeah, that's you know? great. And, that's but it's it's mm -hmm. All right. So then do you have a website as well? I do. My website is healthteamnetwork.com. Healthteamnetwork.com. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and also, you know, a good way to connect with me, especially on LinkedIn, is to reach out to me on LinkedIn um, on that profile there. It's pretty extensive. Um, so healthteamnetwork.com is perfect. Okay. Um, you know, that's that's a really good way to reach out to me. You can, uh, my calendar's on there to uh uh, grab time with me um, and it's on LinkedIn also. And I have a Facebook also for my, the, my business as, you know, ask Dr. Pat lifestyle strategist, because I like putting you know, those pieces of the puzzle that you mentioned in the very beginning. Yeah. Um, I wake up every day thinking, you know, if someone told me I do this and they go, I bet you wake up every day thinking what problems can I solve today? And, you know, I like that stuff. I love puzzles. I do a puzzle, you know, if I, like, if I can't sleep, what I'll do is I'll put my red glasses on, which blocks the blue light, which makes me not, not make the limbic system to hold blah, 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 work uh, incorrectly. So when I take them off, I don't have that residual. You know how people say they have to turn the electrics off a half hour, 45 minutes before, something like that. If you use red light, glasses they're called um they're more of an amber red color than the yellow ones they see right um you know those are for the pm the yellow ones are for the am you yeah know? they're good and they're good they, to they, have. Really help. they actually work more like me with these great bifocals i have on i have that built into my lenses right mm -hmm. now so it works yeah. out really well for for me during especially with in front of a computer screen when you're in front of a computer screen all day yep that's bad, bad, bad for your eyes and for your yeah, body. Yeah, it, it's very, and the yellow ones I find are very soothing, yeah. you know, for like with, I'm out in the sun, it doesn't, I can work on my computer with, um, when I'm doing, you know, if I'm sitting at a picnic table or like in the, in the back or by the pool or something like that, I, I have that accessibility. I can sit in the shade and not have, feel like I'm straining my eyes. And no so well, let's talk about something else that's pretty fun you have a new course that's available for people to come check out. Tell us about that course and then we'll find out how we can get involved with that as well. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Um, the course I named it stronger than medicine. Um, it is five pillars to extraordinary wellness for increased productivity and sustainable energy all day. Mm. What is this for? You know, like a lot of people have expend their energy. Um, like I said, like people get up, and they start to tackle the world and then halfway through the day, sometimes if, you know, for sure, or if not till the end of the day, then um, what happens is, is that they get exhausted and they don't have that energy left over. So the idea is to, you know, help people identify their stressors, identify and manage what's, um, uh, manage time better so that you're more productive. It's to put a new slant on your health. So that because, when, you know, when I have my practice, people used to like, how do you do this? I mean, you're here at eight o'clock in the morning and you don't leave till seven o'clock at night. How do you do this? I go, I can guarantee you one thing that I make certain. I make certain my nutrition is pristine. I'm doing sure my supplementation is pristine and that and I get that I get the exercise that I need, you know, and I have good thoughts. You know, it's just that whole package that we already kind of already talked to. But the but the course promises that also. And so what it does is it helps, you know, um, people, um, you know, it gives people the blueprint to, for self-care. It gives people the blueprint for how to manage that time, you know, and what to spend time on, hmm. you know. But it's a, it's a six-week program. Um, the beta is going to jump on, and on January 3rd it starts. Um, and, um, I'll be running that and then I'll be repeating that again, um, shortly thereafter that, 
um, probably in the beginning of March. That's fantastic. So we talked about before for some of those folks that are making resolutions for New Year's and 2021 and things that they want to do. This could be a, um, a strong advocate for follow through in some of those areas and probably reveal some things to folks that they hadn't thought about that should be in their lives for 2021. Yes, for sure. You know, this is, we all, you know, we all need help, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, and, you know, why not have, um, get the pieces of the puzzle together, get the mindset that you need to walk into 2021 with confidence and a surety, you know, and get what one thing I um, bend over backwards to do is I bend over backwards to support people and I hold them accountable. Mm. So sometimes I probably remind them of their mother or father, but, <laughs> but the whole point is that they, you know, that, you know, people get a, a lot out of that because that, especially that's the support, because a lot of times we do courses and in the middle of it, you're thinking like, wait a minute, I do this live. This is not something that is recorded. This is a live course that, you know, I'm providing. Um, and, and I want people to have, you know, I want to have people have that unfair advantage, you know, going into the new year. I want them to like, you know, there's going to be um, a one-to-one -one consult with me that's very thorough about what that health snapshot looks like right now and how to take that and how to piece that together so you get the best portions out of the course and other, um, and other content that I've done in the past. Um, and then piece it all together. And then we, like we walk through that process together, but mm -hmm. the beta, the beta version of that, um, is, you know, is on, uh, I'm doing it on a Sunday. Um, January 3rd is when it starts. And the reason why I was told Sunday for people are like, I don't, I don't have, I can't do it Monday through Saturday, but I could do it on Sunday, Dr. Pat. And I said, well, everyone gets up on Sunday, right? And you're have, you know, you're, you have a coffee or you have something you do, whatever you do when you first get up. And then around noontime, you want to do something. This is one hour of time that you can invest in yourself, you know, and, and you can walk away with like, you're going to be a lot healthier and ahead of the game than a lot of other people are who are trying to figure out what their immune system's doing. With all this COVID yeah, stuff. that's good. Right? So how can folks find out about that? Um, through LinkedIn, I'm sure you'll have a link on that. Was it also going to be available on your website for folks to find? Um, it will be available on my website, but I have a, the link that I'm using for that is a Bitly link, and so um, that is like in the HTTPS, you know, um, yeah, one forward slash bit dot ly forward slash stronger than medicine. What was, the last, what was the last part? Stronger than medicine? Stronger than medicine. Stronger than medicine. That's a hard thing to remember for everybody right now. So we'll make sure that that's going to be in the notes here for folks to see. But uh, it'll also, like you said, it'll also be available on your uh, your LinkedIn profile, I'm sure. Right, for sure. And, and, you know, the thing, too, is that, you know, when I always say, and I've heard this you know, so many times from doctors uh, and any industry that I have connection with that it's like I have clients in different levels of industry and different types of industry. When crap hits the fan, you got to go back to basics. So the best way to start off the new year is like, get back to basics, look at what your foundation is, look where the cracks are at and get rid of them. You know, it's just like do something that's very proactive so that you live longer, better, healthier, and you can respond to what the environment sends you. Because that's what your health really is, is your ability to uh, adapt. And when you can't adapt, then you have other issues that come up. You know, so there's ways to do that. So if you're, it, it's it's a process and it's an, it's not, um, you know, it, it, it will be supported. And, uh, and I would love to help you. I would help you help everybody. Well, that's fantastic. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll get ready to wrap up things here shortly. I did allude to the fact that we uh, first really started talking during that series I did about self-sabotaging thoughts that hinder happiness. Say that 10 times fast. But um, what do you think are some of those those sabotaging or self-sabotaging thoughts that do hinder our happiness, our health? Well, I think that there's things that people learn in their lifetime um, growing up. Um, you know, and when the same kind of situation presents themselves, they hit a ceiling. And so when they hit the ceiling, instead of working through how to get through the ceiling, you know, punch a hole through it, what they do is they go back into behavior that happened to them, whatever age they're stuck at. 
you know, and whatever that they didn't have an opportunity to do. I also believe that if you tell yourself, you know, that you are successful, that you are going to overcome and you tell yourself in that tense, it will happen. It might not happen straight away, but what happens is that people will tell themselves like, you know, I had a kid that I pre-student taught with who's nine years old and, um, he couldn't, he couldn't read. <laughs> and so I took it upon myself when I was a student teacher for that to sit down with him and just say, Philip, I said, tell me about your mom and dad. And so he was telling me about his mom and his dad and he was stuttering and he was having a hard time. And so um, I said, I'm going to help you read better by the time we're, I'm done here. And um, I enlisted one of the kids in the class to help him and sit with him and read him. I said, I go, you've got to promise me you're going to take him underneath his wing. And so Philip, you know, his, his, when I went through parent teacher night, you know, I had to be there for my grade, you know, I met his parents and, you know, his mother goes, he is so dumb, mm. you know, and I'm thinking, I just look at her. I said, he's not dumb. I said, he reads very well, you know? And I said, he's, I go, he's getting, I go, he's improving his reading and he's really interested in school now. He's got a lot of potential, you know, and, you know, and the father's going like, you know, he's not the smartest kid. You know, and so my message to Philip was after I met his don't parents, your mom and dad, <laughs> don't listen to your mom and dad. I said, if your mom says something and I said, find a go, you can do, go pick your book up, you know, go do whatever they want you to do so you don't get in trouble. And I said, but you can. I said, you're smart, you know, and, and I said, you just haven't had that. I go, it's like they're having a plant and not giving it any water. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, and wonder how come that didn't grow. Um, you know, so it was it, it was a big lesson. I never forgot that moment in my life in helping this kid. I don't know whatever happened to him, you know, but when you know, it's just like they were just, I mean, there's a couple kids in that class that, you know, were very helpful with me with him. Um, so he would became a, a better, you know, learner and, you know, and because and I kept on passing him on to the next grade. I'm going, this kid needs to have one on one attention. And his family didn't have that ability to support that. That's unfortunate. So if the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I just wanted to try to find, you know, a different apple for him to fall, you know, in, in front of to have that memory from. You yeah. know, so I hope I made an impact on him and that that helped him change. Sure his life. Did. I just can't. You know? You know, I can only what a shame. I mean, I'm a parent, obviously, to sort of think about some parent that would say our kid's dumb. <laughs> Not I, so. I would, well, you um, know, I came from, you know, my upbringing was like you never say something back, you know, that. It, uh, but I don't know if my face looked or whatever. I just went. I thought to myself really <laughs> even putting that like dumbfounded look like I is he as dumb as you are right now i mean <laughs> <laughs> well it's just like you know anybody who calls people names you know they're like wayne dwyer always says like you're describing yourself mm. yeah, and so that's uh that's a, a one of the things that i really loved about him and a lot of his teachings you know because he he talked about purpose intention and focus you know and when those are in a line you're unstoppable yeah that's why affirmations are so important in, in, in saying things. So when you talk about how do you self-sabotage, I mean, anytime you go into town, and this is a kind of a funny thing, I want a parking place. I always get front door parking. The only time I don't do that, you know, is when I'm not thinking it. You know, and, you know, I want to meet, you know, thinking like I want to meet, you know, so and such and such a person. And because I was talking to somebody the other day about business contracts. And um, I met this woman at this function and where I'm at right now. And she does, she, um, she teaches people how to write business contracts. And I went like, wow, really? And she goes, cause I don't do this job. She goes, I used to do it. She said, but I just, you know, people, you know, that need that kind of thing, I, you know, will help. Wow. I said, I was interested. I go, it was just an interest of mine that I was, I read something that made me want to inquire about that. And there she was. So you know, when people have that, you know, when they say that I can't, you got to get rid of the can't, I should have, would have, could have, you know, you got to get them out of your language. And a lot of people think that they're being very positive, you know, um, but, you know, at 30 seconds after talking to somebody, sometimes you just want to hang the telephone up um, because there's this, you know, like you're asking them, like, you know, how are you doing? Um, and it's like, you know, I learned as a chiropractor never to ask that question. Right. I said, tell me how your back's doing. Tell me what's going on with your knees and tell me about your kids. 
Tell me what's going on with your kids. You know, I just stayed away from that because people automatically start to focus on what's the half, the glass half empty as opposed to the glass half full, generally speaking. You know, so when people, you look at how people self-sabotage, you've got to take, you know, they have to be willing really to take a look at what their participation is and not having the experience that they want to have. You know, yeah. and, and, and it, it starts out with your thoughts. Like if you, you know, if, if you want to embrace the day, you have to embrace everything, even the bad stuff that happens during the daytime doesn't mean it's, it's you know, like, what did you learn from it? I mean, I always learn to ask that question. Okay, so that happened. What did I learn from it? And how do I go on? How do I keep moving forward? And the uh, quality that I'm lucky to possess is I'm persistent. <laughs> Almost to a point, you know, people go, you're persistent and you're resourceful. And, you know, and when the resourceful, when a person said that to me, I thought, hmm, am I resourceful? You know, and, and then I would think back to things that, you know, happened. You know, it's just like the, uh, my girlfriend's car ran out of gas. We were in the middle of the desert on the way going back to her house. And this guy pulled up with his two kids and he goes, where are you going? And I, I said, what's the name of your you know, place you live? And so she said, she goes, oh, I live there. I'll give you guys a ride. You know, and he goes, I, he goes, I recognize your car. I recognize you. It could have been some other person, you know, but it was just so serendipitous that he was there and we were able to, you know, secure the car, get in the car and get a ride home. You know, yeah. and, and, and it happened within like 15 minutes after running out of gas. We weren't there for hours or anything like that. Yeah, that's amazing. So, so I, I think that work out that way, you know, I mean, there's yeah. it's amazing how how that happens. I mean, I, I consider that to be God moments that God does things and we have faith and we can believe things forward. Other times no. it's just a matter of not being so stick and negative and and learning to be a bit more positive and looking for the good instead of the bad. And that can make a big difference in our lives, you know. Uh, we're, we're wired to be instantly negative people. We can be negative much easier than we are positive. Um, but, you know, just like an exercise, if you begin to exercise those muscles, those faith muscles, those positive muscles, mm -hmm. um, eventually you're you're not going to always be so, uh, there's nobody on this planet Earth that doesn't go to a negative thought. However, um, it's much easier to go positive when we when we work on that stuff and learn how to do it, you know, so well, You know, when you don't like somebody they always say it's about, you know, it's they're mirroring you So I always try to find something I like about somebody first, you know, and then you know The, the other part of it doesn't really ever manifest, you know, um, somebody has to be re really um, have done something rancidly horrible, you know, for me to go like, say like, oh, that's that. But even if I say something like that, I always back it up with like, but you know, he does X, Y, and Z really well, you know, because I always want to try to end it on a positive note and I don't like gossip. And so the, you know, th that part of it is, is really important. Yeah. And, and I, and you have to have the expectation of a miracle, you know, and, and and so if you have that expectation of a miracle, then they come to you, and in, in like bizarre ways sometimes. Oh, so right. You know, I always say more miracles. Some more miracles would be how people can overcome being sick, fat, and tired. That's your book. Can you show it to us. <laughs> that's yes, of course. <laughs> your book that's available on Amazon uh, dot com, or you can also find uh, find links to things through you on your website at Health Team. Mm -hmm. Network.com. Yep. And then uh, coming up uh, in January, you've got that uh, new course, Stronger Than Medicine, that'll be coming available, which is also going to have links on your website and on LinkedIn, uh, the bit.ly.com, blah, 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 Stronger Than Medicine. But we'll have that link available for folks to do that as well, which is going to be fun. That's a six week course, you said. Right. And, and, I'll, and I'll send you the link when we get done today so they can go with the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. It'll magically be here, folks, by that time. So you'll have it. And you'll be <laughs> Uh, be able to can people pre-register for that they can okay. it's like right now for the um for, for the beta courses like it's open it's running and we're and i'm accepting people okay um, me, we'll make sure we make that available for folks and then uh you may be able to do that again coming up uh, for a second round again for folks that might not have been able to make it into the first one but um act fast and you can do it yeah. all right so, you can do it and you can get a very very, very, very special price. The second time, the because uh, that's the beta group and it's been discounted significantly. Um, when it goes live again, I will be doing a special uh, couple drawings in a couple days so that they can, you know, we can, I um, somebody can actually grab that seat on the second one possibly. 
So that will be upcoming and probably like in the middle of February. But right now we're running the beta course is significantly discounted. And because I wanted to also, the reason why I discounted the way I did is not because, because it's the beta course, but secondly, every year in January, I, I always give the gift of health. So I gave a significant and additional significant discount so that this makes it affordable for people to, uh, to jump on and join us. Oh man, even better. So you guys definitely need to find that out soon. Well, Dr. Pat, it has been so good. It's been a great time to spend time with you again today. Uh, well, again, meaning you and I, we've seen each other before, but for those folks that get to meet you for the first time, I'm sure hoping that, that they were able to gain some great value and understand who you are. And again, your website, I'll pop back up, healthteamnetwork.com, where they can find even more information. And you have a plethora of experience experiences that uh, <laughs> provide, you know, provide great opportunities for people to advance in their future. So for those that are watching here on LinkedIn uh, or maybe even on Facebook and YouTube, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. And uh, Dr. Pat, if there's one thing you could say to someone watching today that can help them to really be the most successful person they could be in 2021, what would that be? I think that um, to be the most successful person that you can, you can be is you have to believe in yourself. And you've got to see, and you got to see the end of the line as not a big deal. Yeah, that is so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know a couple of things, right? All right, folks. Thanks again for being here for another episode of Matt Chat Live. We'll see you again sometime uh, soon in the near future. And thanks again, Dr. Pat, for being here today. My pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Mm -hmm.